Graham Boyle, Chief Executive Association of Learning Providers. Uh, just finished uh, the sixth uh, uh, of a series of events I've been running around the country during April, uh, opening uh, up to AOP members and indeed other providers the realities uh, of a flexible single line budget arrangement which comes into force uh, on the 1st of August this year. Uh, many of you will know that since AOP uh, came into being in its current form uh, in 2002, coming up for our ninth birthday now, uh, that one of our core and critical arguments and objectives has been to set up a lay, uh, what we call a level playing field uh, of operation between independent providers from the private sector and from the third sector. Uh, a level playing field for those alongside the Colleges of Further Education who of course uh, quite rightly uh, take a major, are major players in the further education system in the country. But we have argued uh, for the last nine years and indeed longer uh, that all providers irrespective of the type of provider, public sector, third sector, private sector, should be able to access government skills funds on the basis of their capacity to deliver to the quality required, not limited by the nature or the type of organisation they are. Uh, and there's un undoubtedly during that period, colleges of further education uh, have been given opportunities uh, through the funding mechanisms uh, which have not been always available to the independent providers. And we think that has actually been bad for everybody. It's been bad for competition, which actually is bad for colleges, and it has actually meant the government objectives have been held back because they have not always accessed the best provider for the job. Um, and uh, only Christmas just passed, what, four months ago, uh, at long last, the answer we've been striving for for nearly nine years now uh, came down through the system from politicians and politicians were absolutely critical in this uh, in the new government that they were prepared to offer all providers a single line budget from August of this year with all of them enjoying the same flexibilities to use that budget in the way which is right for the providers, communities and customers. Uh, and I've just finished a session here in Taunton uh, just uh, today uh, and we've held them as well in Newcastle, Birmingham, Manchester, London uh, and in Huntingdon across in the east of England over the last couple of weeks, spelling out to our providers, uh, uh, providers whose eyes were still opening in surprise I have to say, spelling out that the freedoms that they've been arguing for for so many years have now been agreed to and come into place this August uh, and there's been lots of scribbled notes uh, and we've done it in conjunction with the Skills Funding Agency uh, where we've had a senior person to each of the seminars absolutely confirming uh, the, the level playing field flexibilities are available to all providers and the number of, uh, 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 of providers who just hadn't believed that this was happening now, and in many cases hadn't believed it would ever happen. Uh, and we've seen it again uh, this morning here in Taunton. And um, we've got providers now going back to completely review their strategic position for the years to come, knowing that they're not constrained simply to delivering apprenticeships, which they do very well, uh, uh, which they will continue to do very well, which they will continue to expand in line with government policy. But they are not restricted to that. They are now going to be working with the unemployed and using skills that they've been using under contract to DWP, many of them, for many a long year. Skills funding agency money is now going into unemployed available to them to get them ready for apprenticeships, to get them prepared for apprenticeships, to get them into and prepared for work. Uh, they are going to go back and I think start pr uh, 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 to produce and to develop act what we're calling access to apprenticeship, pre-apprenticeship uh, training programmes. These are going to be flexibly designed by different providers in response to their local communities and populations. Very innovative they're going to be and it's going to get more people ready to go into apprenticeships that are still being funded by government to a higher and higher degree. They are going to get more and more people ready and prepared to move into these openings over the next few years. And they are going to, and that includes unemployed people. We are going to see independent providers, providers moving strongly into the service to unemployed market 
looking to get them ready for long-term sustainable employment. That's language which has come recently to DWP. It's now being used by BIS and the, and the Skills Funding Agency. Uh, this is becoming a reality and independent providers are going to be part of this revolution and this development. Really exciting, a lot of work in progress, the Skills Funding Agency people running like mad uh, to change their systems, literally and change funding systems and technical systems and data systems and IT systems and I do not underestimate the problems they've got but they're absolutely determined uh, to, to make the changes necessary in the processes that will enable all providers of quality to show what they can really deliver in the next couple of years. Really exciting time uh, and the culmination uh, of eight to nine years of serious influencing on behalf of ALP. It's been a long haul. Uh, we thought we always had the arguments right. Many people always acknowledged we had the arguments right. Taking us a long time to turn the argument, which people have said we had won some time ago, into reality. Reality starts 1st of August 2011. We better believe it. I hope our providers take up the opportunity now being offered to them. Uh, as I say, an opportunity that many of them thought would never come. Roll on August.